Well, hello there. How are you doing today? Do you feel like doing a little bit of DIYing with me today? Well, come on in. Let's get started. What do I have going on for you for today? Well, it's almost November, which means for some of us, it's almost time to put our Christmas trees up. I don't know about you, but I love adding new ornaments to my tree each year. I think it's so fun to DIY new ornaments each year and just add them to the tree, putting the year on the back of them so when we hang our ornaments the following year, we can remember those ornaments that we did in previous years. I think it's always fun to have a family ornament making night. And that is something that I started with the kids about two years ago. Yeah, this will be the third year and it's been a lot of fun. Ornaments are something I like to add to each of my gifts. Today I will be showing you 20 quick and easy ornament DIYs. Some of them are using Dollar Tree items. Some of them are using something as simple as felt. These are ornament DIYs you are not gonna wanna miss. So I'm gonna quit my gabbin, let's jump into it, and let's do some Christmas DIYing in October. Cause why not? Because we can, and that's what we do here. For these first two ornaments, well, you're going to need seven of those blocks. I'm only showing five, but you're going to start off by painting one black and three white. And you're also going to need a red block. The red that I'm using is some of Waverly's Crimson with just a touch of brown to mute it out and rustic it up a bit. For this last block, I'm going with the neutral color. This is a versatile piece, so I say get creative and make it your own. You can totally see where I'm going with these DIYs. There is a bit of gluing that is needed. I'm going with a wood glue by Super Glue because I've seen great results with this. I would encourage you to use an adhesive glue versus a hot glue because when you use a hot glue, there is going to be a gap in between the blocks. And so for a more finished, polished look, you want to use something like this glue that isn't going to leave a gap. And so I'm going to glue two of the white ones together with the black block. And you saw what I did with the red, neutral, and white one. Yep, the theme of these DIYs is definitely Frosty and Santa off to the side there. I did paint one of Dollar Tree's, I guess, beads, but I guess I'm not doing that yet. I'm going with some ribbon. This is a red gingham ribbon that I got at Michael's that I have been using for I would say most of my Christmas DIYs. I did a real fun hot cocoa tray the other day for my mystery box challenge and yeah this ribbon was the theme that went with that tray and so for Frosty and his scarf I'm using this ribbon. 
glad we had that talk. And for Santa, I wanted to go with a bit of a rustic look, and so I'm gonna use this burlap ribbon. Perfect, a rustic Santa hat, why not? Because we can. And this bead, well, it is perfect for Santa's nose. For the face, I'm just gonna use some of Dollar Tree's puffy paint, or is it fabric paint? One and the same, I'm gonna say, because it's easy to work with, it's gonna add texture, dimension, and yeah, and so I'm just gonna keep it very basic and not overthink their faces. The more imperfect, the more perfect it is. It adds to that rustic feel, that handmade, homemade touch. Because these are ornaments, they need hangers. So I'm gonna use this fun new twine that Dollar Tree started carrying a few months back that I have been looking for an excuse to use. I'm gonna say that these are super cute, but they can be cuter. I feel like Frosty needs some rosy cheeks. So does Santa. An easy way to do that is to use an oil pastel. Yep, this is one by Crayola that Allie had in her stash. By taking a stiffer brush and running it along that oil pastel, it's going to put some of that oil pastel on your brush and you can then easily add that soft blended look to the cheeks of Santa so you're not getting those harsh lines by using paint. Dollar Tree has oil pastels, so I say pick up a pack and keep it in your stash. And with that, we've got two adorable ornaments. How stinking cute are these? I love them. For this next ornament, oh my word, I just love this one. You're gonna need three Jenga blocks. Now with these Jenga blocks, you're gonna glue two of them side by side and one mm -hmm, right here along the bottom. Because I'm decorating Ray's tree with my homemade DIY ornaments, I'm doing several of them. Once these are dry, we're gonna give them a good coating with some black chalk paint. And because this is Frosty's hat, it needs a ribbon right along the brim there. So I'm using a black and white, I guess, gingham, buffalo check, you choose, potato, potato. I'm taking some of these Christmas tree scraps and when I tell you they are scraps, they really were, they were in my trash from a garland I made. I'm gonna hot glue some to the brim and I'm gonna add some berries to it. This was a total afterthought. Some are gonna say, Kelly, why didn't you sand this hat beforehand? Well, because easy, it was an afterthought. Didn't think of doing it until after it was done and once I was looking at it, I thought, self this hat looks much too clean and neat and perfect it needs to look a bit rustic aged distressed and so yeah with that grab some sandpaper sanded up those edges and just like that i'm happy it looks just the way i want this hat to look quick tip when you're diying your ornaments and you're placing that hanger on them if you glue i guess the ends on top of each other just like so and you have this loop it's gonna keep your ornament from twisting from side to side once you put it on the tree. Your ornament is gonna face forward and yeah, I know those little things bother me and this is an easy way to stop that from happening. Would you take a look at how stinking cute these are? Quick, easy, budget friendly, and they were made out of tumbling tower blocks. It doesn't get any easier than this. I love these. You can make so many with one box of Jenga blocks. For this next ornament, oh, this is a cute one too. You're gonna need four blocks and you're gonna glue them together in a square just like I'm doing here. For these ornaments, I'm gonna go the traditional color route because I wanna add a bit of color to raise flock trees. So I'm gonna use that crimson red and the Fern Green by Waverly. And yes, they both have a bit of brown added to them. Going on to my computer, doing a Google image search, I looked up some Christmas clip art. Once I found the images that I was happy with, I went ahead and saved them to my computer and printed them out. And the size is one inch by one inch that is gonna fit perfect for these. So right on the back of it, I'm just gonna go ahead and take some hot glue, run it along those edges, yeah, you can see that this paper, I <laughs> I gotta tell you, when I was painting my ornaments, I thought I had grabbed a scrap paper out of my trash and I didn't, it was actually the clip art. And because I didn't want to reprint it out, it wasn't gonna show, so I just went ahead and cut it and used it anyway because nobody's gonna be none the wiser. 
And so yet again, this was an afterthought. I'm telling you, my head has not been completely in the game, but it is in the game enough to get me by. I do suggest if you are going to sand your pieces down, you do it before you hot glue your image in. It will probably be a bit easier, but nonetheless, it worked. I got the job done and I added that age distress look to these as well. And why not finish the front of this off with one of those fun little ornament packs that Dollar Tree has right now. They've got a great selection of them. I had this snowflake on hand, so that's what I'm gonna use. And again, I'm gonna add my twine hanger to the back because this is an ornament. These are so quick and easy and you can really get creative with these. Maybe put a regular picture in them. School pictures, gift them. Dollar Tree, now carry Scrabble tiles. Amazing, right? They've got them in two different packs. You can get a natural wood pack or you can get a multi-colored pack that is in black and white. Now Crafter Square, I am gonna tell you, I wish you would have either done a solid black pack and a solid white pack because I absolutely find it frustrating that it is a multi-colored pack because I don't always want to use black and white. I want to use either black or white or this neutral wood. Nonetheless, for this DIY, I'm using the neutral wood. I was going to use the black and white, but I couldn't get an even pattern because of the colored letters. That was frustrating too. So for this, I'm spelling out Ray in Ibiza. Ibiza is his dog. His labradoodle. I wanted to add a bit of color and personality to this piece and an easy way to do that is using the ribbon, this red gingham ribbon for the hanger and to finish it off with one of my fun bows. Such a simple way to add those personalized ornaments onto your tree. This next one is so easy using these beads that you can get from Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree has a ton of different colors and styles of beads. I'm going with the raw wood ones because I have so many in my stash. You're gonna wanna get the multi-size pack. You're gonna start off by stringing them onto some twine or whatever it is that you wanna string them onto. You know me, I stay true to my nature. Twine, rustic, burlap. Yeah, that's the name of my tree. Well, race tree this year too. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the smaller ones and go small, medium, large, then go medium to small. And just like that, we've got a simple ornament that kind of, I guess, feels like something like an icicle. Yeah, why not? But it's beads. Love that. You can do it as long or as short as you want. For this one, we're going back to those Jenga blocks. You're gonna need five Jenga blocks. I'm gonna glue three together side by side. Then I'm gonna take and glue two more, one along the top of those three and one along the bottom. My thoughts were to make these look like a door originally. Again, because I'm adding color to Ray's tree, I'm gonna go with the traditional red and green and a black as well because we gotta incorporate that rustic farmhouse feel into a flocked tree, because why not? These DIY stickers are perfect embellishments for say, some DIY ornaments. Now with these, I decided to put them on after I did the hanger in the back because I wanted to make them look dimensional. When adding these DIY ornaments, I added a bead to the back to elevate it up off of what was supposed to be a door. I didn't go that route because when I added a bead for the handle, it just kind of looked out of place. So I decided just to go with it because it still looked adorable. And yeah, I still hadn't caught on to distressing this before I finished the DIY itself, but nonetheless, it came out amazing. I did want to show you that somewhere along this journey of these DIY ornaments, I got hip to the process, got smarter, got my head out of the clouds, and figured out that it was easier just to distress it before I added the embellishments and the hanger. So it took me a minute this time, but it came together. So fun these are, right? Next up, we're switching gears a bit. Dollar Tree has these metal tags. They come in a two pack. And so with these, I thought it would be fun to give them a good coating with some of that Waverly red paint. 
When I apply paint to these galvanized pieces, I like to use a sponge dabber versus a brush for a couple of reasons. One, using a sponge dabber adds texture, and two, you're gonna get full coverage with just about one coat. If you use a paintbrush, you're gonna get brush strokes on it. It's a lot harder to get it even, and it's gonna take multiple coats to get full coverage. And so I say just use a sponge dabber and you're gonna be good to go. These are tags gift tags, right? Why not? And so with these, I used my Cricut and using some Dollar Tree's vinyl, I went ahead and cut out just a to and from, and I thought it'd be fun to do one that says to dad from Visa and one that says to Visa from dad. And it was looking a bit too plain, so I decided to go in and add some of my stitching. Of course, why not? It adds so much to a DIY stitching, dots, squiggly lines, slashes, you choose. When adding the hangers onto these tags, I decided to do one at the top instead of having it hang from the side because I just wanted it to sit upright on the tree so you could read it. Yeah, that's why. Quick, easy, and adorable. For this next DIY, I am using these wood discs that I found at Michael's. This is a 16 pack that you're gonna get for $3. You can find a disc similar to this at Dollar Tree for $1.25. It's on the thicker side, but I say go to Michael's, go through their dollar bins, the one to five dollar bins, because you are gonna find some really cool pieces like this. You're getting 16 for $3, so you can't beat that. That equals a lot of ornaments. To this, I would say to two thirds of the circle, I'm gonna paint it with some white chalk paint, leaving that top third blank. The top half, well, it's gonna get a good coating with some black paint and I'm freehanding it. I'm not worried about the line being perfect because it's gonna be covered up. If it wasn't gonna be covered up, I would most definitely use some painter's tape to cover that mess up. I just painted your basic popsicle stick black and it's gonna go right over that line and nobody will be none the wiser that I freehanded it. Look at easy peasy. And for the face of this snowman, again, I'm going to use the puppy paint and I'm not going to overthink it. I'm just going to go with some dots and it's going to have an adorable outcome. Just a bit of a tip. If you add some white highlights to the eyes and to the nose, it's really going to bring your character to life. And well, since I have so many of these snowflakes, why not add one to his hat? What a cute fun ornament, right? And you've got 16 round disc, so I say make 16. Oh wait, don't use all 16 of these round discs on the snowman because this DIY is quick and easy and has such a fun rustic feel to it. I'm gonna give this disc, yep, a good coating with some white chalk paint. This is a watered down chalk paint because it is not Waverly. I have ran out of Waverly chalk paint. I am using just a basic acrylic chalk paint, no, acrylic paint, not chalk paint. So it's gonna take a couple coats to get the full coverage that I'm looking for. I'm cheating, I am, because when I filmed this video, my Dollar Tree didn't have much Christmas decor out. Instead of using a vinyl, use window clings from Dollar Tree. That would be such a perfect alternative. I would have used it if they would have had it at my store, but since they didn't, this vinyl is gonna work. And I am just going to frame this wood disc out with some of Dollar Tree's wood beads. I feel like with the hanger, it is the perfect excuse to add a bit of color and add whatever decor style it is that you're trying to incorporate into your ornaments. And so buffalo check, black and white gingham kind of screams farmhouse. And so it's gonna incorporate nicely into this, but I still felt like it was missing a little bit of something. And so I decided to finish this off with, yes, a gingham bow. And I think that that's the perfect finishing touch. Do a bunch of these and add these to your tree. For this last DIY, I will be using these wood tags. 36 came in this pack for $5. You can't beat that. There are so many things you can do with these besides ornaments. 
But today I'm doing an ornament. I'm gonna give these a good coating with some black chalk paint. And I'm doing several of these, remember, because I am decorating Ray's tree with all of my DIY ornaments. Although you won't get to see the tree done just yet because I haven't decorated it yet. But I will get to that. These tags, if you want to use them for regular gift tags as well, what a fun addition. And you can make them an ornament, put them on the gift for whoever you're gifting a gift to, to put on their tree. I love to gift ornaments on my gifts. To these tags, I'm just gonna add some fun festive words using that white vinyl that you can get from Dollar Tree by Crafter Square. Pick some up. Oh, why not? I can't help it. I'm gonna finish these off with some stitching too. When adding the twine to these wood tags, I didn't just wanna leave it at that. I figured, you know what? Self, you've got more of these wood beads, so why not use it and add it to the top of that twine and just add a bit of something to it? Because why not? Because we can. These are such fun, quick, easy, budget-friendly ornament DIYs that you can get creative with and make it your own. For this DIY, you're gonna wanna stop by the office supply section at Dollar Tree, pick up these magnetic tins. They come in two different sizes, a larger and a smaller. Either one will work, it's just your preference. On the back side, that's where the magnet is. Taking the lid, it's got this see-through cover, which makes this ornament even more amazing. It's gonna elevate this ornament. I'm gonna use the lid itself to actually trace a picture that I wanna put inside of this. Once I've got it good and traced, I'm going to go ahead and, you guessed it, cut it out because what else would I be doing? Hot glue is probably the best route to go for this next step. I'm going to run some right along the bottom part of the container, not the lid, the container itself. Then I'm just going to place that picture right inside. I say that hot glue is probably a better option because if you use a wetter, more tackier glue, it's probably going to warp your picture. You could use a double-sided tape if you want. Now taking a fabric sheet, I'm gonna run it along the lid itself and on the inside of my container, even on the picture itself. Why am I using a fabric sheet? Well, because fabric sheets stop static, right? Have you seen these foam beads at Dollar Tree? They have them around Christmas time every year. When you place them in there, it's gonna make a snow globe. And guess what? Because we used the fabric sheet, it took the static away. It would have stuck to everything but the bottom of this container. And here we've just made a fun type of snow globe picture. But we're not done. We've gotta finish this off just a bit. So taking some Christmas ribbon, I'm gonna make a hanger because this is an ornament. And I'm gonna place just a bit of that ribbon right along the outside just to dress it up a bit so it doesn't look like a paper clip container. Right along the top there, before I wrap the ribbon completely around the container, I'm gonna place the hanger itself there with a bit of hot glue. Then I'm gonna go ahead and finish off wrapping the ribbon around the container itself, which will then in turn hide where we glued yeah, the ribbon hanger, those fine details. Now, to finish this off, I picked up this uh, floral stick from Dollar Tree. There's berries on it. There's some pine cones, some greenery, and I figured that this would be the perfect finishing touch to add to the top of this, making it so fun and festive. These would make for an excellent gift to give, maybe say to grandparents maybe take the kids' school pictures and place them inside and really get creative, the family picture, put them inside and gift these. These are so budget friendly. I'm somebody who loves to make a new ornament every year to add to our tree. And this is one that I added several years ago. You will see the wedding ring on my finger. This is not an up-to-date video. This is a throwback. If you don't have a tree and you just wanna add it to your fridge, you can do that too because the back of it has the magnet. And here I am adding one of Allie's school pictures to it because I thought that this was just such a fun gift to give back in the day and it was one that I did in fact give. This is such a fun, quick and easy one using these LED tea lights. Again, that you can get a Dollar Tree to come in a pack. This DIY has been around a while, but it is sure one that is fun to get the kids involved with. I will be using some puffy paint. 
This is a bottle that you can get at Walmart around Christmas time every year. I love to work with puffy paint. I feel like it just adds to the texture and the personality of winter gifts. So to this tea light, I am gonna take this puffy paint and around the light itself, the little fake flame itself, I'm gonna add this puffy paint and I'm gonna dab it and blot it on, making it uneven. Smooth is the last thing we want this to be. The more textured this is, the better. I'm gonna set these aside overnight. I'm gonna let them dry. In the morning, they should be good and dry to move on with the next step. Yeah, this part, you gotta wait a minute taking some black felt. I'm gonna cut pieces, rectangle pieces. I'm not measuring it out because what am I gonna make? Frosty's hat. And the best thing to do that out of is some of those felt scraps that you might've saved, some black felt scraps. Taking some twine, we need a hanger for this. So I'm just gonna kind of loop it together there, get those ends together. And I'm just gonna hot glue them to one of the squares here. Now this is going to be the top hat part of Frosty's hat and that is how we disguise the hanger itself. Now we need the brim so I'm going to take a rectangle just one piece is all is needed and I'm going to hot glue it there to the side of the LED light then take in the hanger with the two squares glued together. Oh my word, articulate this a bit better, Kelly, please. I'm gonna place some hot glue on the end and I'm just gonna set it right on top. And there we have just made Frosty's hat. Using more of that puffy paint, I'm gonna go ahead and add some of those fine details to Frosty's face, making this adorable. And I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm using dots because there really is no artistic talent that is needed for this. Anybody can do this. The kids can do it. Allie loves to do these. And to the tip of the nose, I'm gonna add just a bit of orange to make it a carrot nose. But I wanted some rosy cheeks. If you take a pink Sharpie and you put some on a brush, you can get those soft blended rosy cheeks that you need for Frosty. Yeah, just a hack if you don't have any chalk or oil pastels, you can use a pink marker, because why not? It's about alternatives, getting creative, thinking out of the box and using what you have on hand to save money. And there we have them, so cute. And when you light these up, they're even more fun because the nose lights up and Frosty's nose, the tip is orange. And yeah, it's just all together a fun DIY ornament. Come on, go make some. Pick some lights up at Dollar Tree. For this DIY, you're gonna need four different colors of felt. If you wanna dive into your scrap felt, this would be a good project for that. I'm making several of this ornament, so I picked up a sheet of each. At 20 cents a piece, this project is gonna cost you a dollar, and it's gonna make several of this ornament. To make this ornament, you're gonna need five different size squares, and I cut three squares of each color in each size. And so the size squares that I have here are from largest to smallest, and you're gonna cut two inch squares, one and a half inch squares, one inch squares, three quarter inch squares, and half inch squares. And again, you're gonna cut three of each color in each size. Now all that's left to do is to put this tree together and it really is just as simple as building this tree up from the bottom to the top, starting with the larger squares. And just by placing a bit of hot glue in the center of the felt square and placing it down on top of each of the squares, offsetting it just a bit, as you can see that I'm doing here. And you're gonna do that with each size. The bottom squares, the larger ones, I did use all of the squares that I cut, but I did realize that when I got to the last two sizes, which was the three quarter inch and the half inch squares, I didn't need, I guess it was like either six or nine of those squares. I used less than that and I really just did what looked good. And if you use all of the squares, it's gonna look a bit funny. And so just kind of look at it and make it proportionate so it looks like a tree. This here is the size that I'm happy with. I feel like it's proportionate and you can see here at the top, the last square, which is the half inch square, I only put two of. 
To top it off, I'm gonna take one more of the half inch square and I'm gonna fold it in half and put a slit in the middle of it. Then taking about a three or four inch piece of twine, I'm gonna fold it in half and I'm gonna pull the hoop through that slit that I just made. Then taking the ends of the twine, I'm gonna hot glue them to the top of the tree here. I'm gonna place a bit more hot glue and I'm gonna pull that last piece of felt down, covering up those ends, giving this a nice finished look. I'm gonna finish this tree off with the trunk, so I'm gonna take two three quarter inch brown pieces of felt and I'm just gonna glue them together and along one of the edges, place some hot glue, put it at the bottom of the tree, and I think that this is the perfect finishing touch to this tree. When I made this tree, I really did not go that extra mile of measuring out every square that I cut. I cut the initial size square and I used that as a guide to cut all the rest. This is one of those projects that the more imperfect it is, the more perfect it is. Alrighty, so getting started with today's DIY, I'm going to start off by making a template because I'm making several of this ornament. And to do the template, I'm going to use two different colors of cardstock because I feel like it's going to be easier. Then I'm going to take a compass. Now this is something that you can get at Walmart for just under a dollar. This is a great tool to have because it is great for making circles. Just about any size circle. You can make up to a 10 inch circle with these, which is awesome because then you're not looking around your kitchen to find something that's the right size circle for you to trace. I'm going to make two circles at the measurement of two and a half inches on the compass, which is gonna give you a five inch circle in circumference. And I'm gonna do one of each on each color card stock. Then you guessed it, we're gonna cut these circles out. Now when doing this DIY and making these templates, I do suggest using two different colors. And I would make one a white one because it makes it just a lot easier. In this case, I'm using green because it was what I had on hand, but any other color will work just fine. I just feel like it's easier to keep track of your templates and what goes with what when doing this. And you'll kind of see what I'm talking about here in a bit. Now taking the green circle, I'm simply just gonna fold it in half and this is gonna make making the template easier because we only have to worry about making one side of the template perfect. Then about a third of the way down on the circle side, I'm just gonna freehand this, no need to be perfect. I'm gonna draw a line just like you see me doing here, right to the outside. Now when doing this, it's gonna be kinda hard for me to explain, so if you just kinda watch what I'm doing, how I'm drawing my lines, and go with me step by step, you'll be able to do it. And this is going to be the template for our apron. If I haven't told you that already, we are making Mrs. Claus's apron, and so you should be left with something that looks like this. And we're gonna cut this out too. The great thing about folding something in half when making a template is that both sides are gonna be the same. You don't have to worry about making the other side even with the first side that you just made. Just by simply folding something in half and doing it this way, you're gonna get a perfect template and both sides are gonna look the same. Now for this white circle, yep, we're pretty much gonna do the exact same thing up until we cut it out. I'm gonna fold this in half. I'm gonna trace the green apron and cut it out. The difference is, is when I cut this white one out, I'm gonna cut right inside of the line. I'm not gonna cut the template out on the line because then it'll be the same size as the green apron. So I'm gonna go just about a couple centimeters in along the whole template and cut it out. Once you cut it out, you'll see that it was even all the way around and now we've got an apron that is just a bit smaller than the green one. To make these adorable aprons, I will be using felt. I've got a piece of scrap felt that is going to work perfectly for this. And so I did go through my scraps just to see if I had any before I cut 
the big one up and so with this again we're going to fold the felt in half and I'm not going to trace it because I don't want any pencil marks if you have an invisible pen that kind of I guess disappears after a bit of time or one that you can wipe off with a wet rag you can use that but I think just by lining up the template onto the felt and just kind of cutting around it with the scissors you get the same outcome and I've also picked up some white felt and this is a textured felt you can find this at Walmart Joann's like I said felt is so inexpensive you can get it for 20 cents a sheet at Joann's and Michael's when it's on sale and I think at Walmart it's probably 25 cents a sheet which is still a great buy and with one sheet of felt you're gonna get a ton of these ornaments you know you're gonna spend under a dollar and you're gonna have a lot so with the white one I'm gonna take the white template place it on the felt and again cut out around the template for the bottom of the white apron, I thought it'd be cute to take some peaking shears and just cut along that bottom edge just to kind of give it a decorative finish. I found this multi-pack of these decorative ribbons at Michael's in the $2 bins. They had them in green and yellow, pink, black, red, and I just thought that it was such a fun set. So I'm going to take the red Rick Rack, and I thought that it would be cute just to add that to the bottom of the red apron. And I'm going to add it with hot glue again. If you want to use a fabric glue, you can. Hot glue is quicker, it's going to get the job done and it's going to work and I think that this is just a fun way to finish off this back layer of the apron just to give it a bit of a different look than the peaking shears. Now look at how that just finishes it off. I like that, it looks cute. Now I'm going to take the white apron and just using some hot glue, if you want to use a fabric glue you can but since I have my hot glue plugged in and it's right here, I'm going to use that to hot glue this white apron right into the center of the red one. And again, diving into those fun multi-packs of ribbon that I found at Michael's, I'm gonna use the black set. And I think for Mrs. Claus's belt, the black Rick Rack will be perfect. You can very easily tidy up those edges of the ribbon to go along with the apron with some detailing scissors, just to give it a nice finished look. Little details like that, I think, make all the difference. Now, if you were around with me at Christmas time, you know that one of my favorite things to use this past Christmas was puffy paint. And so I decided that to add some detailing to this apron, I would use some red puffy paint to just freehand in some cute little pockets on each side of this. I wanted to add a bit more detailing to the white part of the apron and so I did that just by adding some dots right above that bottom edge that we used the peaking shears. With the black puffy paint I figured I'd add a couple buttons to the top of the apron just by putting dots and I guess a couple would be two so I'm going to add three buttons to the top. Because I had some silver glitter on hand I decided to take it out and put a couple dots here at the top where the apron ties would be to kind of act as buttons. I'm not sure if I like it. Jury's still out on it. You can take it or leave it. Not sure if I'm gonna do it to the rest, but I did it on this one. I wanted her belt to somewhat resemble Santa's, and so because I didn't have any gold puffy paint on hand, I had this fluorescent yellow, and so this is gonna have to do for today. I figured I'd add just a square to the center of the belt, and in the center of this yellow square, I'm just going to add a black dot to give it the illusion that that's an open space there. So to hang this, we are going to hang this ornament by the ties that go around your neck when you wear an apron. And so I'm going to put a couple of dots of hot glue on the back and using some of this thin ribbon that you can get anywhere. Walmart has it. I think the cheapest for a dollar a roll and you get maybe five yards. I'm going to use white and I'm just going to hot glue it to the back then just simply tie the top in a bow and this is how we'll hang it from the tree. I felt like the front of this apron was missing something and so I decided to get out my white puffy paint and add a snowflake to the pockets. 
I kind of debated between a snowflake and a heart and in the end I decided to go with the snowflake but the great thing about this is it's a DIY so you can get creative and you can make it your own. And this here is my Christmas ornament for 2020 that I will be adding to each of the gifts that I give. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? It's going out to Shelby Hudson who's bringing to us her DIY Christmas tiered tray. Shelby, I am loving your fun and festive tiered tray. Thank you so much for sharing your creation with us today. Which ornament was your favorite? As usual, I don't think I can pick a favorite because I like each and every one of them. I think that they're quick, they're easy, they're budget friendly, they're fun, they're rustic, they have that feel that I love about them. And most of all, they're versatile so they can really be done to suit any decor style. Just switch up the color, add a bit of glitter, maybe some rhinestones. I hope you all enjoyed these DIY ornaments. If you're looking for more DIY inspiration, well guess what? I've got you covered. Click on the video right over here and it'll take you to some of my past favorites. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy. But most of all, you know what I'm gonna say. Stay positive, please, because I am. Bye for now, everybody. <laughs>